Well, welcome to Daily Living Ministries Christian Fellowship. I'm Pastor German Wright, glad to be coming into your homes today to share with you the good news of the gospel. We thank God for you. I pray that you're ready to receive and that you will hear what the Lord has to say to his church. And then most importantly, purpose to be a doer of the word of God. Today we are continuing on this topic about turning it around. Uh, we're in the book of Romans chapter 12. And today I want to deal with this area of hate evil, love good. Hate evil, love good. Again, the topic is turn it around. Hate evil, love good. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for this awesome opportunity to share with these, your people, the living word of God. I pray, God, that the word that they hear, they would receive, and that the word, God, it is spirit and it is life. And I pray, God, that they will grab hold of it and live by the word of God. And God, that they become a living epistle that can be read up by men. For those who do not open their Bibles, they will see the illustration of your love in the life of your people. Father, we thank you for it and count it done now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Again, we're in the book of Romans, and there are three key scriptures we've been uh, sharing with you. Uh, Romans chapter 21. And if you notice, we're starting from the end of Romans, working our way back. Uh, why do you do that, Pastor? Because the illustration is it's time to turn it around. The first thing that I wanted to mention to you is at the end of Romans 12, it says these words, Romans 12 and 21. It says, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And then the next verse I want you to highlight is Romans 12, 17. Romans 12, 17, and it says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Don't repay evil with evil. Refuse to multiply evil. And then our third verse is Romans 12 and 9. It says, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. And from that topic we take, or from that verse, we take our topic today. Hate evil, love good. Hate evil, love good. What is the foundation of this that God is laying before us? He's saying to us that his purpose and intent for our lives is not to be overwhelmed or overtaken or overpowered or mastered by evil. But he said, I want you to take the goodness of God, and by using the goodness of God, you will be able to master, to overwhelm, and to overpower evil. How do we do that, Pastor? By turning it around. What is this turnaround that you're talking about? It is to take that which the enemy intended to use as evil and put good in its place and turn the tables on your enemy. Change your direction. Make a decision to set a new destination for your future. How? By doing good. Romans 12, 21, do not let evil overpower you, but rather let your good overpower evil. Romans 12, 21 deals with the personal connection that we have. It is a personal decision that we have to make. And then Romans 12, 17 deals with the decision that we as Christians have to make in connection with our community. Don't repay people evil for evil, but rather provide things honest in the sight of all men. In other words, he said you have to decide to use the goodness of God to pay back even evil people. Last week we talked about heaping coals of fire on their head. Did not literally mean that they would have to be punished or destroyed, but literally it is that your generosity will cause your enemies to become 
uh, submitted to the will of God. Today I want to talk about as a Christian how you're going to affect your family, your households, those connected to you by overwhelming them with love. This goodness that we talk about, overcome, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I share with you the principle of good was established in Genesis chapter 1, which says, and God said, and it was so, and it was good. And God said, and it was so, and it was good. So we found that the principle of Genesis 1 is that when God says something, and what he says manifests, he calls it good. So for us to be good in the sight of the Lord, we have to hear what God is saying and do it, and God says that's good. A good man or woman of God is one who hears the word of God, and instead of just celebrating that they heard it, they do it. That's good. So if good is hearing what God says and doing it, then evil is hearing what God says and refusing to do it. He says, that's evil. You know what God intended. You know what God has purposed. But yet you choose to follow your own path and to negate what God has said by rebelling. He said, that's evil. So evil is hearing what God has said but refusing to do it. So in order for us to overcome or to master evil, we must choose to do good. We must hear what God say and do it. He said, if you hear what God say and don't do it, then you will be overpowered by evil. Then you say, well, pastor, it's so hard. I, I don't know. I don't want to do the things, but it seems like I can't control it. But if God says you can overcome evil, then you must submit to the fact you can overcome evil. Because God never asks us to do something that we are incapable of doing. So if he tells us that you're not to be overcome by evil, but you are to overcome evil with good, it is because he knows that there is a capacity within us to do it. So we must choose the path of obedience. So once you get your personal life in line with God, then he said, get your uh, alignment with others in alignment with God's purpose to your relationship to others. When you have your vertical relationship with God in um, tact, then your horizontal relationship with men can come intact. And he said that the way you do that is that when people do evil to you, don't do evil back. Romans 12, 17 says, recompense to no man evil for evil. But ideally, that's what we want to do. We want to retaliate. Someone does us wrong, we want to get them back. But God says that's not the way in which we as believers are to live. He said you got to learn how not to pay people evil for evil. But he said rather provide things honest in the sight of all men. In other words, he said, rather show them goodness. Romans 12 and 20 says, therefore, if that enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. That is hard, Pastor. That's the person who did me wrong. Why would I want to feed them? That's the person who cursed me out. Why would I want to give them something to drink? Because God says that's the only way in which my virtues and my nature can be seen in the earth. If you return evil for evil, you just magnify evil. You multiply it more and more. And instead of the goodness of God being seen in the earth, all we see is more violence and more evil and more retaliation, one hits one, the other hits him twice, the other one hits him now four times to make up for the two times, and then all of a sudden you got fights going on all around us because you're trying to circumvent the word of God. You cannot overcome evil with evil. The only way you're going to overcome evil is with good. So we talked about that. 
this heaping coals of fire on their head. It is not so that punishment can come their way. This heaping coals of fire in the head is not just so that they will feel convicted, guilty, and ashamed. But this heaping coals of fire in the head is that God would even literally reach out and protect the very one who, because of evil, don't even understand what they're doing. Think about this. Those who crucified Jesus on the cross, they could have me immediately been killed by angels. And you know what Jesus said? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He protected them when they were on the, the line to be destroyed. The garrison of angels were ready to defend the Christ. But the very Christ himself said, Father, I want you to protect them. They don't know what they're doing. How many of us can say of those who have been in, uh, uh, coming against us that, Father, forgive them. They don't have clear understanding. Forgive them. They're confused. Forgive them. They're being ruled by hatred and bitterness. Father, forgive them. He said, you heap coals of fire. Literally, he's saying, and when you forgive those who may not deserve forgiving, you protect them from their own, from their own selves. They also said, uh, heap coals of fire means to bless. For in the Middle East, the use of coals of fire were used to provide warmth and heat. So to put coals of fire over someone's head, literally they built uh, a thing in their home that would warm the house. We always thought coals of fire meant they're going to burn them up. But he was literally saying, for your enemy, pray that God would warm their lives and their hearts. That God would even feed the one who dared to come against you. To heat coals of fire literally means to use the heat that comes from the coal to melt that which is hard and stern. Literally, your generosity and your kindness should be strong enough to melt the hearts of unforgiving people. See, your generosity will weaken the conscience of those who have no conscience toward God. How are they going to know who God is if all they see through you is retaliation? See, the problem and the reason why we have to understand the importance of this heaping coals of fire, meaning not to destroy, but rather to protect and to uh, show kindness toward and generosity toward is because if you think that it is your job to punish your enemy, you're just as bad as your enemy. Well, well, what did I do? We well, have to recognize that the only true judge is God himself. So always leave your enemies in the hand of God and let him pass judgment. Not you, but let him pass judgment. Instead of cursing your enemy, you should find out ways you can bless your enemy. You must recognize that all authority is ordained by God. It's just like if you know someone has done you wrong, you don't go over to their house and you bring your gun and shoot them for the wrong they did to you. No, you call the police and leave it in the hands of the authorities. How many things in our lives would be much different if we had left our enemies in the hand of God as opposed to us trying to get things straight? How many arguments would have never even been brought forth if we had just left those folks in the hand of God? If we had just stayed home and not get in the car and go try to tell them off, how much would have been averted? How much evil would not have manifested had we recognized that all authority is ordained by God and you got to give it to God and let him handle it? And when you deal with your enemy, remember this. The same way you forgive them is the same way God's going to forgive you. 
So if you ever get so hard-hearted and you can't forgive people, God said, if you don't forgive them, how can I forgive you? So we got to free ourselves from this mentality of wanting to retaliate, get back at. Get him, God, get him. You got to learn how to become merciful, for he is merciful. So that the same mercy you show to others, God can show it back to you. So now we get to verse 9. It says, let, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. That's a big word, dissimulation. What is it really talking about? It's literally saying, do not let your love be phony, a counterfeit. But let your love always be real and sincere. Let it be genuine. Love them the way you want to be loved. He said, but you can't have this kind of love unless you do two things. you got to abhor, and that word abhor means hate, that which is evil. And then he said, you got to grab hold of and hold tight, cleave to that which is good. That you cannot love without it being contaminated. You cannot love without having a hypocritical spirit, if you allow hate to remain. You must, uh, you are evil to remain. You must hate evil. You must despise evil. When you know what God said to do, you must challenge your flesh. That, that's what I'm going to do. You must challenge yourself not to take the path of retaliation. Because the only way love is going to be genuine. The only way love is going to be sincere is that we have to get rid of what will cause it not to be pure. And what causes love to be impure? Evil. And what causes evil to grow? When you love to do evil. You ever saw people who sort of Smile when somebody else gets things bad happening to them. How can you celebrate the downfall of others unless you enjoy evil? You should pray for people when evil overtakes them. Because not you don't want to be overtaken with evil, neither should you want to see anybody else overtaken with evil. So he says, you must learn how to hate evil. See, see, when you hate something, you don't want it to even be around you. When you hate something, it bothers you when people talk about it and mention it. See, anything that does not line up with God's word and that is a false statement about God's word when it is the opposite of what God said rather than what God says is evil. And every time you hear something that don't line up with the word of God, don't celebrate, don't try to compromise, don't reason it out, hate it. What? Hate it. Hate it when people uh, choose to separate themselves from the truth of God. Hate it when people uh, use the language to curse someone with. You aren't hating the individual, but you're hating their practices and thereby showing them that you're not in alignment with what they're saying. Never agree with somebody who lies. Because to agree with a liar makes you a liar. Right? Never agree with someone who lies. To agree with a liar makes you a liar. Well, I didn't say it, but you sat there and agreed with it, shook your head in agreement and shook their hand as though you, you thought what they said was just. And when you do that, what you do is you make an alliance with evil. And when you align yourself with evil, you aren't able to love without dissimulation or love 
without uh, your love is not sincere, neither is your love pure. So we have to get rid of the things that would contaminate our love walk. Hate, evil. But he said, not only hate evil, but you got to do something about love. Cleave to, grab, and determine you will never let go of loving people. Love others well. How do I love people well? Love people the way you want to be loved. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Be generous to others as you would want others to be generous to you. These are the avenues through which God says you will release the anointing power of God to break the power of evil. Love. Love and don't let it be divided. Ephesians 5.25 says to the husband, husband, love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Love. You got to understand when you love right, when you love people the way God loves people, you end up crushing evil. Love is designed to crush evil. Why does evil prevail? Because somebody failed, failed to show love. Evil raises it ugly head because somebody got to the point they wanted to retaliate rather than love. They wanted revenge more than love. But when you love, you crush evil. See, when you love, love uh, gives, forgives quickly. Love forgives quickly. So when you walk in love and you allow love to take hold of your heart, you don't keep things in your heart for long periods of time. You got to love and forgive quickly. Don't hold grudges. This is how we crush evil. When you love, love always sees the good in other folk. No matter how much wrong they've done, somebody who loves them sees something good still in them. You can have a man who is a murderer and he is in jail for life for murder, but my mama still loves him because my mama sees something in that child. Even though he's been sentenced to life, mom still says there's some goodness in my son. Because love always look for the goodness in everybody. How do we crush evil? We got to love looking for the good. How do we crush evil? We help others to build their faith in God. When you help people to build their faith in God, you create a pattern of love. You create an outlet for them to become more like the creator. Love and faith in God. That is confidence in God. That even when things are going wrong, if you don't have love, you have a tendency to start blaming people. When you don't have love, you have a tendency to hate somebody for no reason. But if you can understand the power of love, love causes you even in your worst condition to still trust. God. He will make a way somehow. I can't see it right now, but God's going to bring me out of this too, because love always have faith. Love always is confident. Perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love is the kind of love God wants us to have. This is how we overcome evil. You gotta have love. Love helps you to pray for the loss so that they might be saved. It's amazing sometimes we get to the point in the church where even the people in the church aren't praying for sinners to get saved. So how in the world are the sinners gonna have hope when the very people who have hope are supposed to be praying for their salvation and instead of their praying for their salvation, they're complaining about their performance. What do you expect from a sinner but sin? What do you expect from a liar but lies? 
So if anything going to change, you can't complain about their performance. You must pray for their salvation. Love is always praying that the ungodly would become godly, that the unforgiven would be forgiven. Love is always interceding and love is always asking God, bring them to the light. Lord, get them out of darkness and bring them to the light. Love prays for the salvation of the lost. And until we get to the place that we are ready to pray for the salvation of all, who will be the intercessors? Who will stand in the gap? The way we crush evil is that we got to love and we got to pray for the salvation of the lost. The way we crush evil is that love wants all to come to the knowledge of who God is. For God is love. See, love says that People who are doing some of the things they do is because they got an identity crisis. And the identity crisis start not with their identity, but with the fact that they don't know who created and gave them identity. See, if you don't know the God of creation, you will never have your own identity. So many children are so perturbed and mixed up because they don't know who their father is. You don't know how much because of the lack of the knowledge of true connection to family and to fathers that men and women get confused and, and they, don't, they, they live lives that are not lives of value and virtue because they don't know who they are. Love says, I want everybody to come into the knowledge of who God is. Because when you know God the Father, then the, you know love because God is love. So, see, sometimes we're trying to get people to love, but they don't know who they are. And when they're confused about who they are, it's hard for them to love you. When people are confused about who they are, they don't trust people. When they're confused about who they are, they, they come up with their own remedies to circumstances because they don't know who they can trust. So when you teach them about the love of God and that the one person they can trust is God Almighty, when you show them how you, your trusting God brought you out of darkness into the light, then you begin to show them a way of escape. The, the only way you're going to crush evil is we got to pray that people come into the knowledge of who God is. But when they know who he is, evil won't have a chance. Finally, love teaches you to restrain your flesh and to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. How many people have no restraints? They don't know how to say no to certain behavior types. They don't know how to say no to certain appetites. It's because nobody taught them the importance of having restraints on the flesh. And nobody taught them that restraining this natural flesh takes the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. You cannot just turn it off and turn it on when you want to. It's not a matter of, uh, you know, having good uh, willpower. You don't overcome sin by willpower. You overcome sin by the power of the Holy Ghost. And so in order for love to teach you restraint, you must learn how to yield yourself to the divine guidance of the Holy Ghost. He is our advocate. He is our comforter. He's our standby. He is our guide. And he is there to guide us out of these circumstances and to get us away from evil. When evil shows up, the Holy Spirit alerts your heart immediately and say, don't do that. When evil shows up, the Holy Spirit says you need to reject that. And therefore, you have the power to restrain and bring under control this flesh. Paul said, I have to be very careful that I have to keep my body under. Bring it into subjection. Subjection to what? To the spirit of God, lest I preach to others and then I myself become a castaway. Without the restraint of the Holy Ghost, you can say the right thing, but it's hard for you to do it because you can't do it in your own strength. 
You can only do it under the strength of the spirit of the living God. Love teaches us how to follow God's spirit, and it teaches us restraint over the flesh. If you're trying to bring the flesh under without the power of God's spirit, you are not going to succeed. Somewhere down the line, you're going to break down. Somewhere down the line, that passion is going to overtake you. Somewhere down the line, that appetite is going to overtake you. You need the love of God and the power of his spirit in in order to restrain the flesh. And when you are able to do that, then evil loses its power over your life. Saints, I just want you to know this day that you got to let love be without dissimulation. You got to abhor or hate that which is evil, and you got to cleave to that which is good. Then he goes on to say in verse 10, and be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. He said when love works, he said you are kind to each other. When love works, you will prefer others even over yourself. This is how we crush evil. He said when love works, look at verse 11, you won't be slothful in business. You'll be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. What? One of the symptoms that love is not in full action in your life is slopefulness. And it'll show up. Slopefulness shows up in your home. Slopefulness will show up in your business. Slopefulness will show up in your schoolwork. Wherever you're not letting the love of God have its perfect work, it will give room to slopefulness. But he said, when love works, you aren't slopeful in business. You become fervent in spirit, and you love serving Lord. Look at this. Love causes you to rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. This is how we crush evil. Distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality. This is how we crush evil. Bless them that persecute you. Bless and curse not. This is how we crush evil. This is what love looks like. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Oh, when we see the love of God working in the body of Christ, when we see the love of God working in our families, what happens when we see one hurting, we all hurt together. When one rejoices, we all rejoice together because this is love in action. And it is the one thing that is designed by God to crush evil. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind and not high things, but condescend to men of low estate, and be not wise in your own conceit. Literally, this verse is saying that you got to learn how to get on one accord in an agreement because the very thing that would destroy love is a discord. And when you can get rid of discord, the only way you'll get rid of discord is allowing love to overshadow and overflow in your heart because the enemy is constantly trying to get us against each other. He's trying to divide us. He's trying to make us find a fault in one another so we can have some reason not to be of one mind. We got to find the reason. The enemy is always constantly trying to get us to judge one another. He's trying to get us to divide from one another because he knows that if we get on one core accord, if we get one mind, love shows up and love will crush evil. He said, you got to even be able to go down and help those who are lower than you without, low, without demeaning them. In other words, go low and lift up. Don't go low and step on them. You got to be able to help the lowly to get higher because when they rise, we all rise. And then don't, then don't get be wise in your own eyes. Because then pride takes over. And pride cancels out love. And pride invites destruction. The Bible says pride comes before destruction. And you got to get rid of pride. 
Because if you don't, evil will be invited in. If you know anything about turning things around, the whole time I've been preaching on this message, the whole message is about how do we uh, turn our lives around. If, if it's not going in the right direction, if you don't see the blessing and the favor of God manifested, what's hindering it? And many times it's evil. And he said, but I don't want you to be overcome with evil. I want you to overcome evil with good. And he said, I don't want you to multiply evil. I want you to not repay evil for evil, but those who've done you evil, show them good. And then he said, and then I want you to walk in love. So when love comes into the picture, love cancels out evil. Love crushes evil. Love puts evil on the run. And so saints today, I just want you to understand, we got to put evil on the run by loving God and loving one another. Even when they've done you wrong, love them. Even reach out to the broken and love them. Even when they don't want to hear you, keep loving them. Even when they say, I don't want you to say nothing nothing to me, go to your house and still pray for them because love is the thing that's going to crush evil. Love is the thing that's going to get rid of the division and the power of the enemy to destroy the house of God. As long as we keep staying in love, he don't have a seat at the table. If you want to see how to turn things around, keep love at the forefront and watch God do what you could never do in your own strength. Today, I just want to remind you, hate evil and love good. Let love have its perfect work in your heart. Let love crush evil wherever it shows its ugly head. So when you go back and listen to this again, I hope you get the gist of the fact that we got to love one another. The remedy to all the evil has developed is love. If we can love one another, if we love like God loved, then we can crush evil every time. Father, I thank you today for the word. I believe it has been sown on good soil. I believe it will bring forth much fruit. Father, I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord, would receive what you have said to us today. And then they go out today purposing to be doers of the word and not just hearers only. And that the transforming power of God would change their lives forever. Lord, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your loving kindness. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you again for tuning in today to Daily Living Ministries. We appreciate it. I pray that you've been blessed by the word of God. And if this word has made a significant difference in your life and you want to sow a seed into what we do, you can do so simply by going to Cash App. Our cash tag is dollar sign DLM Fellowship dollar sign DLM fellowship. For those of you who may wish to pay online, you can simply go to our website, which is dailylivingministries.com, dailylivingministries.com. And you can give there, just click the give tab or put dailylivingministries.com slash give, and it'll take you right to the opportunity to sow your seed. Or for some of you, if you choose, you can just simply mail it in. Our mailing address will soon be on the screen for you both our P.O. box and our physical address. You can send it to either place and uh, we'll receive it. But thank you for receiving the word, first of all. And again, if this has been a blessing to you, just sow seed so that we may see a harvest in your life. Uh, we appreciate all the support. We appreciate your prayers. We appreciate those of you who tuned in today. And for those of uh, you that are members out there, uh, again, you can just do your tithes and offerings right online. Simply, uh, again, go to Cash App and you can give your tithes and offerings in Cash App or you can go to our website and give your tithes and offerings. But we appreciate all of you. We appreciate your support. We'll be back again on Wednesday. Wednesday night, we'll be back in service for our Wednesday night Bible study starting at 7 p.m. You can join us live here online at 7 o'clock p.m. for Wednesday night Bible study. And then at 8 p.m. on Wednesday nights, we have something called Know Your Bible. 
an opportunity for you to get to know how the Bible is. We are really right now working on Use Your Bible. We talked about Know Your Bible, how the Bible is put together. Now, Use Your Bible, it, this tool of our Bible, how do we use it effectively? Uh, understanding that there are different translations of the Bible, understanding that some translations are thought for thought translations, some are word for word translations, some are balanced, what I call balanced translation, and some are paraphrases. So when we know all this, how do we use it effectively? So we give a 30 minute teaching on Wednesday night on how to use your Bible. You can join us at eight o'clock on any Wednesday and get to know how to use your Bible. Um, if you want to be a part of it through Zoom, simply go to our website, dailylivingministries.com, and at the bottom of the page, put your name and your email address, and we will send you the Zoom link if you want to join us. Uh, but you can also join us in person. We're here at the church um, on uh, Wednesday nights right at 7, so you can come join us there. But we appreciate all of you. Thank you again for your gifts of love. And then we'll be again back with you next Sunday. Sunday, next Sunday, we'll start our... Um, Praise and worship here at the church at 1030, and we'll get into the Word right at 11, and we want you to be blessed. Come join us and invite a friend to tune in to the YouTube channel or the Facebook and, and be a part of Daily Living Ministries services. We again appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time. We want you to continue to be blessed. Remember Joshua 1 and 8. It says that this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Take that scripture, meditate on it, and then live it out in the week ahead. Again, we thank God for you. We look forward to seeing you real soon. Have a blessed day today. We love you.